But before I even uh, proceed with our, you know, midday Bible study, this is first day in the month of July, the new month. But in our country, in Canada, it's also Canada Day. So I just want to wish all of you happy Canada Day, uh, brothers and sisters in the Lord, all Canadians, all residents, whether permanent or temporary resident in Canada. We are so grateful to God that we have a country, a country blessed, a country, you know, where we have freedom of expression, a country so blessed by God with resources. And I'm so proud to be a Canadian, not only that, to be privileged by God to live in a country, you know, uh, that's one of the best countries even in the world. I just want us to begin even this evening, and I want you to please join me to give thanks to the Lord for this country. And as we also pray for Canada and pray for our leaders, why can't you just, you know, stand, you know, uh, together with me if you can. And I hope you have your family and your friends together, you know, with you this evening as we go into God's war. But let's begin by honoring God, by thanking God for our country, Canada. Father, we thank you. Join me. You know, with thanksgiving, with praise to God, you know, with, with expression of love to God for this wonderful country. Lord, we thank you for Canada. We thank you for this celebration again. Year upon year, Lord, we express our thanksgiving to you for giving us a wonderful country. Go ahead and just thank God for this country. Go ahead and thank God for the leaders God has given to us. Go ahead and thank God even in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this coronavirus. God has been so gracious to us in this country. Yes, we have suffered some losses, but nothing compared to what many have experienced all over the world. Not that we are trying to make mockery of what people are going through, but we are using this opportunity to thank God for his mercies, for his goodness in this country. Lord, we thank you for Canada. We thank you for the privilege to live in a country like this, a blessed country, a well-endowed country, a peaceful country, glorious and free. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks for this nation. We thank you, Lord God, for the wealth of this nation. We thank you for the good name you have given this nation. We thank you, Lord God, for the blessing upon this nation. As we celebrate this Canada's Day, Lord, we, we just remember your goodness. We remember your loving kindness. We remember it's not because of the expertise in this country. It's not because just of the good leadership we have in this country, but because of your mercy, because of your love, because of your kindness. Lord, we, we, we are grateful as people of faith. We acknowledge that it is you that have blessed us. It is you that have lifted us. It is you that have done us well even in this country and we worship you. We give you praise. We honor your holy name. Can you just go ahead apart from giving thanks to God? Let's continue to bless and begin to bless Canada right now. We bless this country in the name of Jesus with enduring good leadership. We bless the political system of this country that nothing broken, nothing missing. We speak life upon Canada in the name of Jesus. We declare we declare from dominion to dominion in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, we speak God's grace. We speak God's peace upon this land. We decree in the name of Jesus that our borders and our walls in the name of Jesus shall not be broken, shall not be invaded in the name of Jesus by any form of evil. In Jesus' mighty name, we bless Canada economy. We say in the name of Jesus, God have lifted you up. You will stay and remain lifted in the mighty name of Jesus. You are a country to be desired. You are an enviable country, and so shall you remain in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Speak blessing upon this country. Speak blessing upon this land. Speak blessing upon the leadership. Speak blessing upon the economy. Speak blessing upon every aspect of Canada in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we receive even more into Canada men of renown. We receive into this country men and women that will build and raise the foundation of excellence. Excellence, even in this country, we speak in the name of Jesus that Lord God, 
the enterprise of this country will flourish in Jesus' mighty name. Can you also take authority over every satanic plot and plans concerning this country? It will not stand. It will not come to pass. Every satanic intention, satanic devices against the well-being, against the welfare of this country, we stand as people of faith. And we spread our spiritual wings over this nation. And we decree in the name of Jesus that shall be no breaking him or breaking out in disaster in this country. Can you also pray for Canada even in this you know, global pandemic, in this COVID-19 you know, challenge all over the world? I want to pray and speak blessing, speak recovery, speak in the name of Jesus, supernatural intervention. We believe of, as people of faith, we are praying and we believe that the life behind this coronavirus has been extinguished by the power of God. And so we speak in the name of Jesus that Lord God, coronavirus effect will not proceed any further in this country. Father, Lord God Almighty, we speak over all the provinces and territories of Canada. We speak peace in our borders. We speak deliverance upon our nation. We decree that Canada, you will fulfill your eternal destiny. Even in the global affairs, in the name of Jesus, you will not go into oblivion. You will not go into obscurity. We decree, we declare in the name of Jesus that you will shine as light. You will be the city set upon the hill. You will continue to be a voice. Even in the continent of the world, a good abash, a dozis, a fradi. We bless our prime minister. We bless even our premier. We speak wisdom. We speak grace. We speak strength. In the name of Jesus, we command the name of Jesus, recovery of economy. We command the name of Jesus, oh, supernatural recovery. Oh, supernatural restoration. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. Lord, I thank you. For this country, I give you praise for it. I give you glory. I give you glory. You know, can you just go ahead and pray for the next, you know, one minute for this country? Pray for yourself. Now, listen very carefully. You know, the, 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 the future of your, of your children depend on the stability of this country. Uh, the, the future of your, of your children, the future of your family depends on the expertise, you know, of our, of, of our leaders and, and doing things right. The Bible says we should pray for our leaders so that we can lead peacefully so that we can dwell in, in you know in, in, in peace in every areas of our life I just want you to go ahead and begin to pray in the name of Jesus pray for our leaders pray for for them concerning everything that pertains to them Hallelujah. Montoski da brando vodeske magizi de gengorusi tangra hapra vedeg ne moskadio rekokoska da brando yodemani site te teleboski. We pray in the name of Jesus. We bless them with wisdom, with skill, with expertise. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we speak and we ask, Lord God, that we give us righteous leaders, people, Lord God, that we follow after your heart, people that we legislate, Lord God, laws that we eb rebuild the fabric, the righteous fabric of our country and lead us in the way of righteousness. Thank you Father, in the name of Jesus for you will help us so that we can fulfill our prophetic destiny in this country. We thank you for it. We give a praise and Father we just honor you one more time for this Canada day. We, we, we rejoice in all that you have done for us. We thank you for life and we thank you for all the provision that we have. Even in you we give a praise we honor your holy name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We say thank you for all we are enjoying and all we will continue to enjoy. We give a praise for the future of this country. And we, we plead the blood of Jesus upon everything that pertains to Canada. And we speak life and we speak peace and we speak prosperity. And we decree in the name of Jesus that Canada will fulfill our destiny. Your name will be glorified. We enthrone Jesus. We enthrone Jesus. Lord God, from the north down to the west, east, Lord God, and south, every area of this country, Lord, we enthrone the kingdom of God. And we say, Lord God, that your church will prosper in this land. That the gospel, in the name of Jesus, will prosper without any endurance. And we give a praise. We 
behind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus, with fetters of iron and all your court, we render you useless and render you powerless and we scatter your schemes and your devices over this nation and we decree in the name of Jesus, Canada shall be saved. Oh, Canada, destiny shall be fulfilled and we give you glory. We thank you for it. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. And if you believe in that prayer, come on, shout, amen. I said, shout, amen. Praise Jesus. It's such a delight, you know, to pray for our country. And Bible's, Bible, you know, told us we must pray for our country. And we must, you know, pray for our leaders as well. So please, not just only on a day like this, but consistently in your, you know, in your, in your prayer time, you pray for our country, you pray for our leaders, and also play your part as a citizen. Hallelujah. Play your part to ensure that you contribute to the progress and advancement even of the wealth of this country. And God will help you as you do so in the mighty name of Jesus. So happy Canada Day. And I hope you're having a wonderful time even with your family and friends. And I know this is a public holiday. And I'm still here sharing the word of the Lord with you. It's our midweek service as well. And you're all at home listening to me right now. And I want to please take your Bibles. Please host a watch party if you can. You know, tag a friend to listen to what I want to share even this evening. Uh, I started a message on Sunday uh, tied to divine protection. And I laid some foundation. I will encourage you, go on our you know, YouTube channel, on our website, or just download our app, or listen to our radio. You'll be able, online radio, you'll be able to you know, uh, get the foundation of the message that I laid even on Sunday. And it's going to be a blessing to you. Can I quickly also mention this within a minute or two? You know, happy new month. Today also is the first day in the month of July. Seven speaks of perfection. Seven speaks of complete cycle. And I'm believing God in the name of Jesus that somebody we experience in the mighty name of Jesus a new beginning. I'm praying, I'm trusting the Lord that this cycle of pain is broken in somebody's life. I'm trusting the Lord that the Lord, God Almighty, shall perfect, shall bring to consummation, completion, that which consigns you in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm trusting the Lord that as you step into this seven months, all that you have anticipated, believe God for, you know, confess God's word about. We come to maturity. We come to friction. We come to perfection in the name of Jesus. What well, that means is this. You are going to experience those things that you have expected in the mighty name of Jesus. This month, you will have a testimony in Jesus' mighty name. I will talk more about this new month, what the Lord put in my heart for the church, especially our local church, our friends and partners on Sunday by the grace of God. So don't miss that service. But let's get going, even this evening, because I have a very short time to share some things very important with you. And the subject is divine protection. Walking in divine protection. Glory be to Jesus. Walking in divine protection. Glory be to God. Now, I mentioned on Sunday, and I think I drew our attention to what I use, the scripture I use for, you know, my uh, teaching or preaching, uh, Psalm 91. Very popular scripture that many believers, you know, always read, you know, always, you know, quote. Why? Because this scripture uh, in all its entirety, focus our attention on what God will do for us, especially in time like this. In time like this, you know, this difficult time, this challenging time, we need to really meditate more on this promise, uh, this scripture, more than ever. And that's the reason why I'm preaching this message. Why? Because, you know what, for several months now, people cannot go out, they cannot come in. I'm talking about our border closed. You know, uh, uh, people cannot travel. People cannot engage in things that they need to do. Why? Because of this, you know, virus. And, 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 and we believe, God, that we have freedom already. We have victory already. But in the midst of all of this, there's still so much panic. There's still more, so much fear. And we know a lot of people have even lost their lives in the midst of all this. But God promised us that in the midst of this challenging moment, there is security, there's protection. And that's why I want to share with you one of the privileges that you have as a child of God. And like I've said, without going back to what I shared on, on, on Sunday, you know, this divine protection focuses only on the people that are in the family of God. 
God cares for everyone. God is God to everybody, but is only a father to those that are in his family. So I mentioned six things in Psalm 91. Psalm 91, and I want to go over it. I gave the outline on Sunday, and that's why it will be very important. Uh, do you good if you listen to that message I preached on Sunday, and it's already you know online, and you can take advantage of that because I have a very short time and I have to run through my notes expeditiously to be able to cover quite, you know, some ground. One of the things that I mentioned is that the covenant of protection, uh, you know, which is part of the new covenant that we have in Christ Jesus, uh, speaks about what God has already done for us in Christ. That is what grace has provided for us. So protection is part of the benefit of our redemption. It's part of things that Christ has bequeathed to us. The same thing like forgiveness of sin. In fact, if you read Psalm 103 from verses 1 to 5, you will understand what the Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. God that redeemed our life from destruction, that heal us of all, our, of all our diseases, and also deliver us from all destructions. And I said that, you know, divine protection, you know, uh, fall in that category. God not only, you know, crown us with, with his loving kindness, not only load us daily with his benefit in terms of provision, but God also deliver us from destruction. So divine protection is part of the benefit, part of the you know, covenant privileges, part of the inheritance of those that are in Christ Jesus. So if you want to enjoy this benefit, just receive Jesus as a Lord and personal Savior. So when you are born again, when you are a child of God, you are also entitled to, to this. I use a lot of illustration on Sunday to be able to talk about who is qualified for a benefit or not. But let's focus on you know, Psalm 91 because there are six points that I you know, brought out in the scripture uh, on Psalm 91 that speaks about what we need to do. Now, God has already done everything that you know, he's supposed to do regarding our protection. He has done everything that he should do to keep us safe in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. He has done his part. But for us to walk and take advantage of what already belongs to us, we need to know our part. And there are six things that were mentioned in Psalm 91 uh, that we need to really, you know, focus on if you are going to walk in divine protection. If you are going to see, you know, deliverance, you are going to see the manifestation, you know, of angelic intervention in your life, or you are going to see God, you know, helping you in certain areas, the help is already there. You know, the blessing is already there. I'm talking about how you can make it work for you, how you can walk in it, not walk for it. Hallelujah. Jesus paid the price, is in, is within your, your grasp now, but how do you lay hold on it? How do you walk in it? So that it can what is legal can become vital. What is legally yours can become experiential in your life. Hallelujah. So let's go to Psalm 91. And I'm going to quote a lot of other scriptures, you know, to substantiate my point. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. So Psalm 91. You know, for benefit of reading. So let's go back to Psalm 91. And please, you know, take your Bible, take your pen. As I will go through some of these things one after the other. In Psalm 91, we begin to read, you know, from verse 1. You know, Psalm 91 verse 1 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Are you reading with me? Like I've said, Psalm 91, please, let's read together. You know, this scripture is talking about what God promises God to do for us. And then 16 out of these 15, 16 verses, there are 16 that God expects you to do that we activate what he has already promised. Hallelujah. So he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, Bible says, shall abandon the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noon. The eight thousand, hallelujah, shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. 
only will thy eye shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is thy refuge, even the most high, the habitation, there shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Verse 12 says, they shall bear thee up. In their hands, let thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon lion, Ada, the young lion, and the dragon shall thou trample under thy feet. Verse 14 says, Because he had set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. And I will set him on high, because he had known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. And I will be with him in trouble. And I will deliver him and honor him. And verse 16, say with me, With long life. Will I satisfy him and I will show him my salvation? Wonderful promise. And I say, I mentioned this on Sunday, that many people call this scripture, they get excited about it, and they forget their part to make this scripture work. So what is number one? Your part. Verse one. Without wasting time. Bible says, he that dwelleth, hallelujah, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So who is that person that will abide under the shadow of the Almighty? He that dwelleth in the secret place. So I mentioned, I said, for these promises and the blessings that God has already you know, established in Christ for us to walk. I talk about protection now. Protection from evil, protection from assaults, protection from danger, you know, protection from any form of attack of the enemy, whether in the area of your finances, in the area of your health, in the area of your marriage, or in the area of your, you know, real estate, every aspect of your life. Number one, you must learn to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. It is your responsibility. That is the beginning. For you to know the secret place of the Most High and dwell in it. So let me quickly, you know, establish that. Dwelling in the secret place is the beginning of your safety. Dwelling in the secret place is the beginning of you walking in divine protection. What does that mean? Bible says, he that dwells. So it is, you know, something that you have to do. God will not force you to dwell. You have to make a choice about that. It is a choice that you have to make. And can I say this to you? Many believers have not been making this good choice. And they have become prey to the enemy. God forbid. That is not God's will. God's will is divine protection, but you have your part to play. And the first thing is learning to dwell in the secret place. Now, let me help you a little bit between, within this short time that I have. When we talk about the secret place, and I think I've tried to explain this in the past, the secret place is not the name of a church. The secret place is not a geographical location. <laughs> the, the secret place is not America or United, uh, sorry, I mean, uh, uh, Great Britain or Canada or, or, or South Africa. No, no, it's not a country. Oh, okay, where is God's secret place? The God's secret place is not located in a denomination. If you read the scripture very well, in the light of the new covenant, God's secret place is Jesus. Now listen very carefully to this. I'm going to connect this together. Bible says, he that dwelleth in the secret place. Hallelujah. God, listen to this. God located you in Christ. God put you in Christ when you came to know him as your Lord and personal Savior. So God put you in the cleft of the rock. You are in Christ. He did that as an act of grace when you responded to the call of salvation. But it is your responsibility to remain there because the word dwell means to live or stay as a permanent resident, to continue in a given condition or state. So God put you in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, when you came to him, he put you in Christ. That is, you are in Christ. Because the Bible says, if any man is in Christ, don't forget that 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things has passed away, behold, all things become new. So, by the virtue of you being born again. And that's why I said that this divine protection can only be activated or fully enjoyed 
and, and experienced by those that are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Because it is a spiritual state. It is a spiritual experience. So God put you in Christ. But you need to continue to dwell in Christ. Hallelujah. For you to be able to stay in the place of safety and protection. So to dwell in the secret place is to continue in the place of fellowship with Jesus. Is to be in what we call the hiding place of the Most High. Now, if you read Psalm 32, you know, verse 7, Psalm 32, verse 7, talk about God's hiding place. You know, Apostle Paul put it, you know, this way in Acts of Apostles, when he was talking about in him we live, in him we exist, in him we have our being. Verse 7 of Psalm 32 says, you are my hiding place. So, remember, God's hiding place is not a location. So you can be in United States and get into trouble. You can be in Canada and get into trouble. You can be in Africa, anywhere in Africa and get in trouble. You can be anywhere in, Carib in the Caribbean, you know, peninsula and be in trouble. But when you are in Christ, God's hiding place, where you are preserved from trouble, where, you know, you are surrounded with songs of deliverance, Hallelujah. It is in Christ and it's a spiritual state. Hallelujah. So God wants you to continue to dwell in where he puts you. He puts you in Christ. Hallelujah. And you need to learn how to dwell there. You must have the revelation that God's secret place is Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, let me have the, the theology of somebody right now. If you read Colossians chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible talks about the mystery that God revealed even to us. The mystery that, you know, I've been eating for a very long time that people do not know about. The Bible said that's mystery. In verse 26, he said that, but now God has revealed it to his people. What is that mystery? I'm talking about God's secret. What is that secret place that many people do not understand? People do not, cannot comprehend. Bible told us in verse 27 of Colossians chapter 1, it says it this way, very powerful, uh, uh, talking about Jesus. For God wanted them to know the riches and the glory of Christ as, uh, uh, for you Gentiles and, and too. And this is the secret. I'm talking about the secret place. Christ lives in you. Hallelujah which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So, ladies and gentlemen, and when you hang around in the church, around my teaching and preaching, you get to know this better. God's secret place is Jesus. Hallelujah. God's secret place is Jesus. That is the secret that many people have not understood. Anyone that is in Christ is in the secret place. Hallelujah. Anyone that have come to know Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior is already in that hiding place. He's already in the cleft of the rock because Jesus is the rock of our salvation. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. I'm trying to first explain to you about the secret place. Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place. And see, if you are not born again, how will you dwell in the secret place? No, you cannot. You are not shielded from satanic onslaught. Why? Because God's secret place is not a building. God's secret place is not a denomination. Stop running away from church to church, denomination to denomination. God's secret place is not a country. Hallelujah. God's secret place is a person. God's secret place is Jesus. And Jesus, therefore, is God's pavilion, is God's glory. Is God. And that's why Jesus said to people, a time is coming. He was rebuking. You know, that woman was saying, oh, our father, remember John chapter 4, the Samaritan woman? was saying to Jesus, our father said, upon this mountain you will worship. But Jesus Christ said, a time is coming. And now it is that true worshiper will no longer worship in a place. But it's going to be in spirit and in truth. I'm just trying to affirm to you, what is God's secret place? Jesus. So if you're born again, you need that revelation. Christ is the rock. Christ is God's secret place. Bible says, it is in him we run into and we are saved. So Jesus is the ark. Of grace now. The same way Noah built a ark that preserved people's life in the first world. The ark of protection, the ark of security now from God's dispensation of grace, in God's dispensation of grace rather, is Jesus. I said first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. Just to help you understand it, for you to understand what the Bible was talking about. God said it this way, and this is revelation to some people. He said, to the, talking about the, the people of Israel, when they are going through, 
they are joined in the wilderness. The Bible says, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Now, that is the rock <laughs> that followed the people of Israel in the wilderness. God said it was Christ. All I'm trying to say is this. The hiding place of the Most High is Christ, is Jesus. Hallelujah. And if you are born again, you are already in that in, in that in that in that in that in, in that rock in, in that in, in, in the in the secret place of God. Because if any man is in Christ, if you are born again, you are in Christ. Hallelujah. But the problem is this: Do you know that? Because a lot of people do not understand that being born again is not just about being forgiven of your sin. It's not just getting ready to go to heaven and spend eternity with God. No, it is about dwelling in that secret place as well. It's about knowing that you are in the secret place of the most High. So let me break it down because I have a very strong feeling. I may not be able to get through all my point. And this is just point number one. If you are going to walk in divine protection, you must know the secret place. Not only know the secret place, you must dwell there. You cannot enjoy the blessing of the secret place until you are there. And to be there, you must be born again. When you are born again, it's not enough. Because many people do not know how to dwell there permanently. Because the word dwell is to live or stay as a permanent resident. To continue in a given condition or state. So let me put it this way. Somebody will ask me the question. Pastor, what are you talking about? I, I, uh, you said Jesus. I, 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 do, I do not have physical Jesus in front of me. So listen to this. No. Write this down if you are writing. The written word of God has taken the place of the unseen Christ. I repeat. The written word of God has taken the place of the unseen Christ. So not only you know, are you in Christ, God put you in Christ, so in our own explanation right now, to make it read to us, God put you in his world. Hallelujah. So to dwell in the secret place is to dwell in God's world. If you are going to walk in divine protection, you must learn to dwell in the written word of God. Hallelujah. You must learn to be a lover of God's word. You must learn to stay permanently in God's word. Can I say this to you? This is what has been the problem of many Christians that have, they have experienced defeat. Sickness has destroyed their life without any resistance. You know, they have expressed a lot of losses and injury and attack as prosper over their life because they are not word-driven, word-abiding, word-dwelling believer. They have no honor for God's word. If you are going to walk in divine protection, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. If you are going to experience God's safety, God's supernatural intervention in your life, if you are going to see the angels of God walking for you, you know, doing amazing things in your life, you must be a man and a woman of God's word. Remember, God and his word are one. Don't forget John chapter 1 verse 1 to verse 4. Please, anytime you talk about Jesus, then you need to see him as God's word. Anytime we talk about dwelling in the secret place, we are talking about dwelling in Christ. And when we talk about dwelling in Christ, abiding in Christ, you know, functioning and having communion with Christ, we are talking about having communion and having, you know, relationship with him in his word. Bible says in the beginning, in John chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Bible says there was nothing that was made without the word of God. Bible says in him, there was life. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. About and the word was made flesh. Glory be to God. All I'm trying to say is see, the word of God and Jesus cannot be separated. When we talk about dwelling in Christ, we are talking about dwelling in the word. So that's the beginning and that's the foundation. Why dwelling in the word of God, you know, uh, fellowshipping with God's word, you know, fellowshipping with God in his word, getting to know his promises, you know, meditating in God's word, you know, learning to, you know, interact with God's word, learning, you know, to, 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 dwell in the word of God, meditate in God's word, you know, let the word of God dwell in you richly, the scripture says. And let me tell you the reason why that is very important. Hallelujah. I'm still emphasizing number one. Okay, listen to this. Remember the scripture that we read again. Go back to verse 1 of Psalm 91 for you to have better understanding of this because this is the problem with many people. They quote the promises but did not see and know how these promises will come to pass. But he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow 
of the Almighty. So let me explain this further and give you a good example. I, I, have you noticed that when you stay in the presence of someone, let's say a smoker, somebody smoking, you know, say, let's say you stay in the presence of that person, or maybe somebody that is cooking, and, and then they, there's so much, you know, uh, flames or odor coming out of the, the cooking or out of the smoking, and let's say you stay in the presence of that person for a very long time. Do you know what is going to happen even to your cloth or your body? You are going to begin, you know, to take upon yourself the odor, the flame that is coming from either the, from, from the smoker or the cook. You will see that quite all of, all of a sudden, if you move away from the presence of that person, whoever comes in contact with you, you know, can begin to feel and sense even on you. Even though you are not the one, listen very carefully, you are not the one that is cooking. You are not the one that is smoking. But because you are in close proximity, you came under, you know, the impact of that smoke. Now, listen very carefully. I'm saying this for you to understand something. As a matter of fact, if you stay longer with that person, the person continues to smoke or cook, you know, uh, uh, unstopped, con continuously, you can become so, you know, uh, engulfed in that smoke. <laughs> you can become so drenched, you know, in that flame, depending on how long you stay in the presence of that, of that person or in that circumstance. So think about it in the natural, sorry, in the, in the spiritual. When, when, you are, when you dwell, now listen to this, when you dwell in the presence of God's word. When you abide there consistently, night and day, and you meditate in it, and you allow, you know, the, the life of the word of God, because God's word has life that it transmits. And when you, are, when, you, when you allow that word to be transmitted into you, it does something to your natural physiological makeup. This is my view. Listen very carefully. This is very important. For you to understand what I'm trying to say. Because the Zoe life of God is in God's word. The Zoe life of God. Remember Jesus Christ put it this way in John chapter 6 verse 63. He said, the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and also they are life. That is, the word of God carries spirit life with it. Hallelujah. So when you tabernacle with God's word, when you dwell in God's word. Dwelling in God's word means you are fellowshipping with God's word. You are, you know, somebody that loves God's word and you spend time with God's word day and night. The life of God in God's word will become, you know, transmitted into your physical body. And somebody said, Pastor, what are you talking about? I just explained to you. Somebody is cooking. You can feel it in your, in your, in your body. You can feel it, you know, in your soul engulf in your clothes to the point that you know you 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 it's as if you have taken over the nature of the food hallelujah so also trust me ladies and gentlemen the life of god the life of god you know from his word because bible says in proverbs chapter 4 verse 22 bible says it is life to those that find it and health or medicine to all their flesh. The word of God also literally, the life of God begins to get into your body. Now I'm telling you how you have divine protection. You, I'm telling you how your body becomes immunized. Hallelujah. How your organs become immunized against virus and diseases. Why? Because you are building your immune system, spiritually speaking. You are building that, you know, spiritual, you know, red blood cells and, and white blood cells in that will wait off diseases without you even saying anything. Hallelujah. Why? Because when you dwell in God's word, you are dwelling in the life of God. Hallelujah. Because the word of God has life in it. The word of God has ability in it. Glory be to Jesus. Now, because I don't have much time, let, let me explain this to you. I'm still talking about dwelling in God's word. The reason why many Christians have not, their body cannot resist anything is because they are not soaked in the anointing. There's an anointing that flows through God's word. There's life that is transmitted through God's word daily. I'm telling you, when, when you get into God's word, the spiritual ability, the spiritual, I, I, I may not be able to even explain this in human, human language. There's something that is important 
get into your being and get soaked even into your body. Get into your spirit. Hallelujah. Now, all of you who understand this, you know, uh, science have told us that when people work in certain companies, when people, you know, are uh, uh, exposed to certain kind of radiation, it can actually destroy certain organs in their body. That, that we are told also, if you expose yourself to sunlight, there are certain things in, you know, in, in the sun that, that helps us even to, to be healthy. Vitamin D. I'm trying to say the same thing with God's word. The word of God contains power grace, ability, that when it gets into your body, it will reconfigure it. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, okay, please. When you go home, you know, you read Second Corinthians chapter 3, in you know, verse 18. Bible says, as we behold him, hallelujah, with an open face, as in a glass, you know, the glory of the Lord, which is in the word of God. Bible says, we are changed. We are transformed. We, we metamorphosized. Hallelujah. If you read also, glory be to God, you know, Romans chapter 8, even verse 11, Bible says, if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that same spirit is in you. Bible says, the same spirit will Quicken, we make alive your mortal body. I'm trying to say to you, when you are dwelling in God's world, you are dwelling, you know, in his presence. We are dwelling in the place of fellowship, of communion, that also, you know, involve prayer. You know, something is released to you. And those things are part of things that protect you. Not only protect your body, it protects your mind. Oh, glory be to God. It protects your mind from satanic assault. It does something glorious to you. Oh, glory be to God. Now, let me give you a good example in the scripture. And this is my conviction. And you may need to read your Bible and prove this. You know, the scripture mentioned in, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 7. And you talk about Moses. Bible makes us understand that in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 7, that, you know, Moses was 120 years old and when he died. But his eyes was not dim, nor his natural vigor diminished. That is, that is totally contrary to the way people lived in his day. But do you know, the Holy Spirit ministered this to me. Moses, Moses, listen, I just quoted to you 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Moses was one of the few people in history that spent 40 days twice in the glory of God. Spent 40 days twice in the glory of God. He didn't eat. He was just in communion with God. He was dwelling in God's presence. He was dwelling in God's glory. He was dwelling in it. I'm saying this to you, ladies and gentlemen. There is longevity that is imparted into your body and your spirit, into your organs when you are a dweller in God's world. I'm telling you, there is something that is transmitted into you. I believe the reason why Moses' eyes, Moses' body, you know, was strengthened, was supernaturally enabled was because of that encounter. Hmm. He had that supernatural encounter that changed his life, elongated his life. Can you please make this, if you are going to walk in divine protection, especially that you keep your body strong, keep your organs strong, and continue to cause your body to be so strong against any form of, of, of attack, any form of virus, every form of diseases, even in all your organs. Be somebody that is soaked in God's word. It builds a defense mechanism around you. The Bible says it's medicine. It is life. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 22. Jesus said in John 6, 63, the words that I speak unto you, that is the word of the living God. The Bible says they are life and they are spirit. And John chapter 1 told us, and the word became flesh. And the word became flesh. Every revelation and truth of God's word you dwell in will make your flesh to become supernatural. Sila. We change the configuration of your body. We, we cause your organs to be strengthened. The same way in the natural, you know food help you. You know those vitamins, they are of good you know, uh, benefit to you. I can say this to you spiritually speaking. The same thing with the life of God. It goes through your soul, your spirit. Hallelujah. Remember what the Bible says about the word of God. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. The Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than two edged sword. Be as into divine the sound of the spirit of the soul and of the body. Of the spirit of the soul of the body. And the Bible talks about his division of the soul and the spirit and of joint and of marrow. is the descent of the thought and intent of the earth. The word of God touches every aspect. Be as into it. It will destroy 
low blood pressure. It will destroy you know, low, blood, uh, low, low span count. It will destroy any cancerous cell. If you believe, hallelujah. Hmm. I think somebody will make a new decision in this new month of July. I will be a lover of God's presence. Hallelujah. Because when you are in his presence, what is in God gets released upon you. Hallelujah. The aroma, the aura, the presence. Hallelujah. Can I also mention this to you? I don't have time. I'm still dwelling in this number one. Glory be to Jesus. In the Middle East, in the ancient times, anytime shepherds want to protect their sheep, one of the things that they do is that they will rub oil. They will rub oil on their sheep consistently anytime they are, you know, taking them out to, to be fed. And you know what happened? Because, and this has been proven scientifically, when you put oil on a sheep, it hinders flies from attacking them or flies, insects from, 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 from choking them. Hallelujah. You see, the word of God is self-anointed. I'm only trying to say to you, when you begin to take the word of God very seriously, when you begin to read it night and day, when you begin to confess it, when you begin to dwell in it, in your meditation, in your thought, Bible says, he keep it in perfect peace, whose mind stays on him. When you begin to confess God's word, supernaturally, you are robbing the oil of grace around your body. That is why when insects and when things that is causing people's body to disintegrate, when they come in contact with you, they die of their own natural cause. Somebody will say, Pastor, but I don't understand that. You cannot understand that the same way you cannot understand people being born against supernaturally. But it is the truth. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. I know I've spent so much time trying to explain that to you. But when we talk about dwelling in his presence, we talk about fellowship. We talk about communion. I'm not just talking about just reading the scripture. I'm talking about meditating on the scripture. I'm talking about fellowshipping with God. You know, enjoying his presence. Getting soaked, uh, you know, under his presence. You must do that. Many believers do not understand that is important. That is where your protection lies. Glory rests upon you. The hand of God rests upon you. And many things apple in his presence. Hallelujah. He begins to inspire you. He begins to guide you. He begins to lead you. And it is in that place you begin to develop the consciousness of his divine presence. Hallelujah. And that will be a blessing to you tremendously in Jesus' name. Oh, glory be to God. Ah, glory be to God. Now, that, that's number one. Dwelling in the word of God. Dwelling in his presence. You know, abiding in the truth of God's word. Uh, abiding in fellowship, seeking his face and loving him and, and just you know, enjoying him and speaking to him. Something supernatural happened to you. And the benefit of it is that you begin to hear him and show you great and mighty things you don't know. He begin to speak to you. You become alive to him. And you develop, you know, a consciousness of his presence. And you are engulfed in his glory. And you are imparted by his grace. Glory be to God. And you begin to flow in your body down to your soul. And your spirit, you know, that have the life of God begin to release that life. That's interaction that occur. As you dwell there, many believers doesn't dwell there. They are casual visitor. They only pray once a week. They only, you know, read the Bible once a month. They, they only hear the word of God once in a while. So you can imagine why the atmosphere around them is penetrable by the enemy. Hallelujah. God has no strong defense. So the second thing that you need to do, hallelujah, uh, and if I can finish this, I'll just take it up, you know, uh, continue in our midweek service until I get these six cleared out for you. Amen. You know, the second thing that the Bible says, which is very important, that you have to do. Number one, you say, eat that dwell it. That's your responsibility. Are you going to dwell, continue to dwell, not your dwelling, abiding? Oh, I, I just feel like saying a lot about dwelling. But the, two, the second thing is that I will say of the Lord. I will say of the Lord. So the second thing, to walk in the reality of what God has already given to us, to be able to enjoy this divine protection, not to us only dwelling in the world, dwelling in his presence and seeking his face and loving him on a continuous basis, but also to say, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, in him will I trust. So the second thing is this, what you say will determine your deliverance. How you speak will determine whether you are going to see the manifestation of what already belongs to you. 
Many believers doesn't speak right, doesn't talk right. And this is a very, very, very serious situation. What you say is very important to your protection and safety. What you have is what you say, and what you continue to have is what you continue to say. So, I need you to understand this. Listen very carefully. The Bible says in Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 24, it's very important. The Bible says, if you shall say to this mountain, be thou removed. The Bible says, you know, have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever I say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and there's not that in his heart, but believe that those things that he say will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever thing you ask when you pray, believe that you will receive and you shall have them. Now, it's very important for you to understand that what you say determine what you get. Many people, the reason why they cannot walk in safety is because they are speaking contrary to God's word. Speaking contrary to what God has said. God said, I will save you. They said, well, you know what? Every summer, holidays have flu. They speak contrary to what God has said. They speak death and destruction. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 29, the Bible says death and life both are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs chapter you know, 18, verse 29, death and life are in the power of the tongue. The Bible says those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You need to understand life or death, they are in the power of the tongue. As a matter of fact, your tongue is like a switch. You set emotion by what you say, either the law of life or the law of sin and of death. Hallelujah. You can't say, you know what, this is my sickness and recover from that sickness. Hallelujah. You cannot say that who knows what will happen to anybody and then you'll be exempted from, 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 from chaos. You cannot be saying something contrary to what God has said and have a different outcome. Bible says in Matthew chapter 12 verse 37, Bible says, by your word, you shall be justified. By your word, you shall be condemned. Matthew 12, verse 37. Now, what you say determines your deliverance or your safety. You cannot be talking about sickness. About sickness is your sickness. This diagnosis is my diagnosis. This problem is my problem. And you are going to experience the safety and, you know, supernatural intervention of the law. I know somebody will say to me, Pastor, you know, I'm a, I'm a realistic person. You know, I love to speak the fact. Oh, absolutely. You know, that means you are carnally rude or rather sense rude. Why? Because God do not want you to just focus on the fact. God wants to focus on the truth. Your senses will explain and affirm the fact. And they, the fact always, you know, will be reasonable and meaningful. But your spirit attests to the truth. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. So it's very important for you to understand this. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 2 says, You are sneered by the words of your mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. Now, what you say will determine your protection or not. Glory be to Jesus. I said, glory be to Jesus. So, please, words are spiritual. Words are spiritual. We read in John chapter 6 verse 63, Jesus said that the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The reason why many believers have lost their lives, lost their income, lost you know, their employment, lost their investment, some terrible things happen to them is because what they say in conversation, how they speak, you know, they always say, oh, I don't know, maybe they, I hope this thing will not kill me. Oh, I hope this, I, I hope I'm, I'm not going to lose this business. I hope, you know, this will not happen to me. I don't even know what's going to happen to my future. When you speak like that, I will tell you the consequence. Number one, words are spiritual. Whatever you say, take its nature and take its place in the realm of the spirit. Remember, the Bible says in Psalm 107, verse 20, the Bible says God sent his word and his word healed the world because word is spiritual and word is living. Hallelujah. Word is not meant, now listen to this, words are not just meant for communication. Words are meant for creation. Hallelujah. It's to create. With your words, you create. With your words, you create. Many people have created disaster for themselves, created a problem for their future. Hallelujah. All I'm trying to say is this. The Bible says God healed through words, and Satan also destroyed through words. And so you have to be very careful what you say. And I see, you see, this scripture that you read, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, He is my fortress. You need to be saying, I will say in the name of Jesus, in this pandemic period, in Jesus' mighty name, no evil shall befall me. In this coronavirus, you know, uh, 
a, a pandemic, you know, uh, challenge in our country. The Lord preserved me from evil. No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. That is what you should be saying. Why? Because we know for the angels of God, this is another reason why, and I'm jumping some of the things in my note so that I can close the next 10 minutes, you know, and now we continue the, the remaining, you know, for another time because of our time. So I can allow you to enjoy your Canada day. You know, <laughs> one of the reasons why, and listen to this, and I want to read Psalm 103, verse 20. Psalm 103, verse 20. You know, one of the reasons why what you say is very important is this. Part of your protection plan in Psalm 91, if you read it very well in verse 11, uh, verse 11 and verse 12, one of the, you know, strategies that God has put in place for your safety is for the angels of God to protect you. Now listen very carefully. Psalm 91 verse 11 says, For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep thee in all your ways. In all your ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Angelic assistance, angelic intervention is very important in the pursuit of your destiny. For you to get to your destination. For you to be able to fulfill you know, your assignment in life. For you to be able to experience the fullness of what God has planned for you. But listen to this. If you read now Psalm 103 verse 20. Listen to this. Angels can be released or be incapacitated. Psalm 103 verse 20 says, Bless ye the Lord. In Psalm, Psalm 103 verse 20 says, Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word. Now listen, who do his word? Heeding the voice of his word. Angels cannot function without God's word. Angels cannot carry out anything that you have not given voice to. And the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, I won't you know, you know, give you that scripture right now. The Bible says, do not say before an angel it was an error. Hallelujah. You see, angel doesn't act into your word. They act into his word. Angel does not carry out your word. They carry out his word. So when you make his word your word, but how will you make his word your word if you are not dwelling in his word? Hallelujah. How will you give voice to the word of God that's not abundant in you? That's why dwelling in the word is the foundation. Hallelujah. So angel of God in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 says, I did not all ministering spirits sent for to minister for those who will inherit salvation. They are to minister for you. They are to go ahead of you to make all crooked ways straight. They are to help you in your interview process. They are to help you in your pursuit of destiny, your real estate, in things that you do to position and to arrange things and put things in order. If you read the Old Testament, angels were involved in all the exploits. But can I say this to you? What you say, release your angel or incapacitate them. And that's why you cannot say, oh, you know what, I don't know what is happening to me. I'm confused. You can't say that. You need to say, I'm blessed of God. I don't know what to do right now, but I know it in my spirit. And I know, you know, wisdom has been given to me. And I know inspiration and idea, ideas are coming. And now we know the right thing to do. Then the angels of God will be released. Why? Because you are speaking God's word. Hallelujah. You are speaking things in line with God's word. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So many believers are not saying anything at all. Why some believers are speaking words of destruction? You have to be very careful what you are saying. Well, because nothing even happened in Genesis until God spoke. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. Bible says, and God said, let there be light. What are you saying? Are you speaking prosperity? Are you speaking increase? Then when you do so, not only you empower the Spirit of God, hallelujah, but you activate the angelic ministry. Don't speak words of death. When you do so, you empower satanic forces against you. Speak words of life. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 told us, Bible says, by faith we know. By faith we know that the whole world, now listen to this, the whole world, hallelujah, was framed by the word of God. Hallelujah. How are you framing your word? Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 verse 3. By faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. 
Hallelujah. By the word of God. Now, you need to frame your own world, your health world, your financial world, your marital world. Don't say, well, I don't know what's happening to me. I'm not 30 years old. Well, I don't know whether anybody will even like me. If that's the way you are talking, you will remain. But when you say, I am blessed of God, I'm wonderfully made, God's word said, none of us will lack our mate, I am blessed of God, I know God have a man for me, it will come at the right time. Do you know what is happening? Angels are released to orchestrate things to bring it to your desired purpose. If you say, I don't know what is happening, no, I've never gotten a job, I don't know what is going to happen to my life, I don't, no, then you are not going to be protected from unemployment. But when you say, no, it doesn't matter. God has a place for me. God has an assignment for me. It will make a way for me. You release the angels of God to walk in your life. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. This is very important. And I just leave that number two, you know, because the scripture says in Numbers chapter 14, verse 28. Don't forget this. Number 2, 28. Numbers 2, 28 says something very profound. God said to Moses, say to them, and I'm saying to you, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. Why? Because it's a spiritual law. Words create. Words activate. Activate the word of the spirit. That is, in the word of the spirit, you activate whether God's angel or demonic forces. Words is, 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 is the one that switch into motion, the law of life or law of sin and of death. Don't say I'm dying. I don't know whether this thing will kill me. You are speaking and setting in motion, you know, the law of, you know, sin and death. Glory be to Jesus. I, I don't have, you know, much time to go in depth into that. Uh, hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. God is good. God is good all the time. Now, let me just give you you know, the third one, you know, I can't go into that. You know, my time is, 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 is fast spent. If I start, I'll not be able to finish. Glory be to God. Now, I, I'm going to believe God. Maybe this Sunday, as we even start this month, I will finish this so that I don't carry it too long because I doubt whether I will even be able to finish all of this thing, even on Sunday. Uh, maybe I'll have to take it to, uh, to Wednesday as the Lord will help us even in the new month. I will just go believe God to, to guide me regarding this. But I hope this has been a blessing to you. You know, just mention it. Two out of the six things that you need to do for you to walk in God's divine protection for you. It's already yours. He has already done it in Christ Jesus. He has bequeathed it to you. It's part of the benefit. But what is legal may not be experiential in your life if you do not know how to walk in it, activate it. And it begins with dwelling in the world. Dwelling in his presence. Make it an essential thing. And I'm trusting the Lord that I'm going to, you know, in our month of July, which is our month of growth and development that focuses on, on character, competence, and also capacity. My, my goal is to be able to help you, to be able to learn how to dwell in the world and dwell in His presence and dwell in the anointing and dwell in, in the grace of God so that that grace and that glory can get soaked even in, and penetrate into your body and to your soul. And it's going to do some wonders. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The second thing, like I've said, what to say matters. You cannot be so weak and so unguarded, you know, with what to say. What to say determine the outcome of your life. Bible says, with the mouth, confession has been made unto salvation. Whatever you are saying is what you are going to see. What you are saying is affecting things in the realm of the spirit, bringing to pass God's will or activating satanic plot. In the midst of this crisis, don't say, I am a prey. Don't say, I am, you know, I, I, so anything can happen to me. No, 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 no. Stay focused on God's will. Come on, say, I'm exempted. I'm anointed. I'm appointed. I'm blessed. I'm equipped. No evil shall befall me. But if you are already soaked in God's presence, you have already even built the glory wall. Hallelujah. You have already built you know, the anointing wall. Hallelujah. Your body is already soaked in the power of God. Glory be to God. Anything you come in contact to or come in contact with you, die of their own accord. And that is supernatural release of the life of God, the joy life of God in you that you have interacted with. And I will talk more about that more. And I will give you the four remaining things that you need to do. What to do the time you want to get in your life. God bless you this evening. And I hope, you know, this is a blessing to you. I've had a good time, 
you know, sharing God's word with you alone here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. God is good and, pray and gracious while all of you are home. I hope this is a blessing to you. Can we just pray together? I just want us to dwell in his presence for a minute by just worshiping him and just confessing his word and just thank him and say things that will release the angels of God and empower an atmosphere. Do this in the next two minutes. Just worship the Lord. That's part of the dwelling. That's part of abiding. Just, you know, confess God's word. Glory be to God. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We worship you. We honor you. And then begin to speak God's word. Lord, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we are healed. Hallelujah. We are not trying to be healed. Lord, we thank you for we are the body of the anointed one and his anointed. We thank you for the greater one is in the inside of us. We have become the righteousness of God. We have the nature of life, the nature, Lord God, of blessing, the nature, oh God, that overcome the world. We give you praise for Jesus is in us. The Spirit of God is in us. We cannot be stopped. We cannot be overcome with evil or with destruction. We thank you for we live over and above destruction and we thank, hallelujah, that our power drop fatness. We are blessed going out, blessed coming in and we give a praise for it. In Jesus, precious name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you this evening and I hope you have enjoyed this as much as I have enjoyed teaching it to you. And I'm looking forward, by the grace of God, to connect with you on Sunday. Please uh, join us 10.30 for our celebration service, victory celebration service. Or, and, and just, you know, you can connect with us on our YouTube channels. And I will encourage you to download our app, whether on Android or an Apple device is free, but we have a lot of resources that will bless you, a lot of teachings, you know, like this, that will be a blessing to you. We have 24 hours online radio. We are the word of God that you hear. That's part of the dwelling. That is part of you interacting with God and his word. And there will be a release, you know, a flow, change from one level to another, being renewed, hallelujah. And then it will change also even your communication, how you speak. So download our hub, please, you know, Encourage your friends to do so. If you want to give to our ministry, please, that would be a great joy. We believe in kingdom giving. We believe in grace giving. Uh, and you will hear me when I talk about the other four things, you know, how this is also connected to it. Uh, so please, go ahead and give. You can, you know, give through you know, our portal, you know, uh, on any of our, you know, uh, uh, you know, device, whether on the website on if on our app you will see how to donate how to give or maybe just send you know email money through operations at you know colc.ca and that will be a great blessing every wednesday morning we pray like we have done so this morning and so join us on sunday and follow me also follow me online whether on youtube uh, sorry on you know, Instagram or Facebook, buy your wallery. You know, you can follow me anytime. And why? Because I teach a lot of other things, right things that will inspire you and be a blessing to you. Until we meet on Sunday, I commend you to the grace of God and I speak God's blessing over you. In the mighty name of Jesus, be blessed. Enjoy your evening. Happy Canada Day again. And know that there's divine protection for you. You just need to know how to walk in it. God bless you and enjoy your evening. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.
you.